there's two major concepts in mathematics. Uh, one of them is domain, the other one is range. This video is primarily about domain, but I, I want to give you a quick way for you to uh, keep these two concepts separate. First of all, D comes before R in the alphabet, I comes before O, and X comes before Y. So everything is alphabetical order. Uh, these three things are synonymous with each other. They're synonyms, domain, input, and X. I like the word input because if we input, for example, the X value of 10, 2 times 10 is 20 plus 4, the output would be 24. So instead of thinking about it in terms of domain and range, think about it in terms of input and output. You put in a number, out comes a number, okay? But whenever you're asked for the domain of a function, you're asked, you're being asked for all the possible numbers you can put in. All right, so in the place of x here, I can put in a zero, I can put in negative 16, I can put in 480, I can put 16.2. There doesn't seem to be any number I can't put in. So we would say that the domain is all real numbers. Now, I would like to give you a little bit of a rule here. I want to explain how to find domain. I want you to understand how to find domain in two different ways. Number one, how to do it numerically or algebraically, okay? And then I want you to know how to find domain looking at a graph. Okay, so a lot of students, they feel like they need to graph all of these functions to state the domain, but I'm gonna make this real easy. I'm, I wanna give you a rule here. The domain of a function is always all real numbers with the exception of two things. Now, first of all, domain are all real numbers. This is the way to write all real numbers in interval notation. You also may see a double bar R that is the symbol for all real numbers, okay? Now, there's only two no-no's you have to be on the lookout for, two no-no's. The first no-no is you can't have a negative under a square root. And the other one is you can't have zero on the bottom of a fraction. Well, looking at the first three problems here, the first three functions, there aren't any square roots in here, okay? This is an exponent of two, which is a square, but don't confuse a square with a square root, all right? So these first three functions do not have a square root, and there are not any fractions with letters in the bottom like this one here. This one has a letter in the bottom, okay? So the first three problems, the no-no's don't apply, so we would say that the domain is all real numbers, okay? So unless it violates one of the two no-no's, it's always gonna be all real numbers, okay? But I also wanna show you the first three problems and I want, to, I want you to see the graphs and see why it's also all real numbers from a graphical standpoint. So first of all, do you, got, do you understand that they're all real numbers because the no-no's don't apply? Okay, that's the easiest way to do it uh, without looking at a graph. But if we do look at a graph, the first one has got a y-intercept of four. So we've got the first point there. And it's got a slope of two over one, up two over one. Okay, now domain is the x values. The x-axis goes east and west, goes left and right, okay? So when you think about domain, I want you to think of to the left, to the right. Now, if you look at this graph here, it goes forever to the left. You may say, Mr. Cash, it's going down. But that is a y direction. As far as east and west is concerned, this graph is going to the left. And as far as right concerned, it's also going to the right forever. Even though it's going up, it's also going to the right forever. Okay, so uh, that is another way to look at it that way. The second one there is a parabola. Every exponent of two is gonna be either a happy face or a sad face. In this case, it's a sad face because the graph is going down forever and there's a little negative leading coefficient, okay? So domain, thinking left and right. This graph is forever going to the left and it's forever going to the right. Even though it's pointing down, that is a y direction. Remember, domain is always east and west. These branches forever, to get they get wider and wider as you move down. 
So that's another way of looking at the domain. It's all real numbers for that one. Let's go on to the cubic, the exponent of 3. First of all, this yellow function, that's x cubed. That is the default or the parent function. This plus 2 is going to move the graph up two units. Okay. And once again, even though the graph is going up forever, domain is only considered with going east and west, left and right. This graph is going to the left forever. It's going to the right forever. Even though it's going up as well, it's also getting wider and wider and wider. Okay. So that's a way of, that is a way that you can look at the um, graphs of the first three and state the domain as well. Now, what about these guys? If the no-nos do apply, what do you do now? Well, I'm going to explain it to you um, algebraically before we look at the graph. So the first one here, the no-no applies because we have a square root. Here, the no-no applies because we have a square root. And here, we have letters in the bottom of a fraction. So there's a possibility of us getting this little sad face zero in the bottom. Okay. So let's look at these guys algebraically. All right. So let's look at the first one here. We have a square root function. By the way, this yellow, this red thing here is not a graph. It's a number line. It's okay. So I'm going to plug in numbers for zero, the x value of zero. If you put zero in for x, you get zero plus four, which is four, which is two. So we don't get a negative under the square root. Even if we plug in a negative one in for x, negative one plus four is a positive three. So we get square root of three, which is okay. Now, if we plug in negative four into the function, Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. The square root of 0 is legal. It's okay. But notice if I put in any number to the left of negative 4 over here. Okay. Let's pick like negative 4.1. Okay. If we plug in negative 4.1, which what we end up with is a negative 0.1 under a square root. Now it doesn't matter what the number is. The fact is, is it's a negative which is undefined. In other words, any number less than negative 4 is not going to work. So we would say that the domain is any number less than or equal to, whoops, we want numbers that do work. Any number bigger than negative 4 is going to, is going to work. Okay? Any number less than negative 4 will not work. All right. Now the second one here, this is a little bit more complicated. Once again, if I plug in 0 for x, I get 25 minus 0, which is positive 25. The square root of that's 5, so that's okay. If I put in positive 5 in here for x, I get 5 squared, which is 25. 25 minus 25 is 0. Square root of 0 is okay. But notice what happens when I start to put in a number bigger than 5, like 6. If I put in 6 here, I'm going to get 25. 6 squared is 36 which is negative 11, and the square, root of a, the square root of a negative number is undefined. So 6 is not in the domain. Matter of fact, anything bigger than 5 will not work. Okay? So it looks like all the numbers, including 5, less, all these numbers seem to work into the function, and the same thing with negative 5. If we put a negative 5 in for x, we're going to get a positive 25. 25 minus 25 is 0, and that is okay. But any number less than 5 will not work. So we'd say that the domain is anything less than 5, but greater than negative 5. And we're going to include that. Okay? Now I'm going to show you the graphs of these in just a moment, but I'm trying to explain this to you algebraically and numerically so you don't have to depend upon a graph. Okay, so uh, the other one here, the other no-no we have to be on the lookout for is we cannot have zero in the bottom of a fraction. Now, there's only number one number in the whole wide world that will make the bottom zero. That would be negative 5. If x is negative 5, we would get negative 5 plus 5, which is 0, and 0 in the bottom of a fraction is bad. Okay, so 
In this case, we'd say that the domain is any number except 5, or negative 5. So instead of stating any number that x can be, sometimes it's easier to state what x cannot be. And in this case, x can't be negative 5. Now, if you look down here, it doesn't matter what's on the top here because it only matters what, what makes the bottom 0. See how there's an x squared there? In this case, x can't be 10 or a negative 10. So be on the lookout for uh, the exponent of 2 because Remember, a negative times a negative is also a positive. So in this case, we'd have two exclusions for the domain. All right. Let's go back to the graphs of these um, three. So I'm going to show you the graph of the three functions that I just showed you. <clears throat> so first of all, this is the parent function, the square root of x. It starts here at the origin. It goes that way. Now this plus 4 is actually going to move the graph 4 units to the left. So that first function there got shifted to the left. Now if you look at the domain, it starts at negative 4 and then it goes forever to the right. Okay. So anything bigger than negative 4 is okay. So just by looking at the graph, it starts at negative 4 and it goes forever to the right. So remember, domain is x values. The other function, notice it starts here at negative 5, and it ends at positive 5. And anything in between this interval here seems to work. So even though it goes up and down, it starts at negative 5, and it ends at 5. Okay, That would be the domain and interval notation. Looking at the other function. Uh, first of all, this is the parent function here, y equals uh, 1 over x. The parent function would look like that. Okay. And what the plus 5 does here is it moves it to the left 5 units. So you see the red graph there. Okay. So let me get rid of this other stuff. So notice that the graph here um, goes forever to the right. It goes forever to the right. There's an arrow. Go that way. And it goes forever to the left, but there's an interruption here at negative 5. There's an asymptote there. So we'd say that the domain is everything except negative 5. Okay? Now, in interval notation, this is stating what x can be. This is stating what x can be, cannot be. So you can state it in one way or the other, doesn't matter to me. Now the last function here, that is a cubic. First of all, a cubic is that one. This minus 2 is actually going to move the graph down two units. Whoops. Okay. And remember I said at the very beginning of the video that you, can ha you can't have a negative under a square root, but you can have a negative under a cube root. Because a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. It's okay. And if you look at the graph, it goes forever to the right, and it goes forever to the left. So we would say that the domain is all real numbers as well. Okay? So I try to give you an overview of all these different types of functions. We have a linear equation up the top. We have a quadratic here. We have a cubic here. The domain of all those is all real numbers. Why? because the no-nos don't apply. And the last one here is a cube root function, which is OK. So the domain of that is all real numbers. These three that you see here in yellow, I'm making a big mess of this graph or this paper, these have restrictions on the domain. It's not all real numbers, because we have these two no-nos we have to be on the lookout for. So hopefully, you can answer these graphically by looking at the graph, or algebraically by trying to avoid these two no-nos.